All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about slices. First, we're going to look at JavaScript and how our arrays work in JavaScript. And then we're going to look at Go and how arrays and slices work together. Here we're creating an array of six elements. And then we add a seventh. And then we add an eighth. And then we remove the last one. And then we're going to print the length. And then we're going to add something at position 50. By the way, what do you think this will do? Will it will error out? What is the new length that is going to be printed here? If you never wonder these things, let's find out. So here we have a length of seven. And after doing Doing this we have a length of 51 we can delete things in the middle of an array and you, we can have holes in the array in this case the array is full all the way until position 7 uh, well, on the position 6 and then it has a hole and then it has something at position 50 With JavaScript lets you do whatever you want you can grow arrays you can shrink them under the hood though the runtime will be allocating chunks of memory and copying things around if you run out of space in that memory go gives you nice abstract but it's a little more closer to memory. Okay, so let's go look at Go. So here I'm declaring that I have an array of six elements and I explicitly tell the compiler what they are. Now I could also do this and let the compiler figure out that this needs to be a six, but I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna put a six explicitly. An array cannot grow in size. There's no primes that push or anything like that. So much so that the actual size of the array is a part of the type. Now, what does that mean practically? Practically, it means that if you do something like add numbers and then you receive an array of six integers, this is a different type from this. Like strings and bool are different types. An array of five and an array of six are different types. So the capacity or the size of the array is a part of the type. So that makes it kind of less useful in the sense that what if you want to write a function that receives any number of array? Well, then you are going to have this, which this is not an array. This is a slice. A slice does not store anything. A slice is like a view of an underlying array. You can have one, two, three slices viewing different portions of that array, but it can be like one backing array under the hood. So let's do that, okay? So here we have an array of six elements. I'm creating a slice by saying, I wanna take from index one through index four, not including index four, so these three elements. And let's do S2. Uh, and we're gonna do from index four through index six, which is the capacity, so these last two elements. And we're gonna print both. So we have these two slices here now, but this one array, these, I'm not creating new array. I'm just creating slices that are seeing specific portions of that array. So I hope it's clear what a slice is. A slice does not store anything. There's a backing array. You can have multiple slices. You can have a slice of the whole array. So how do we create slices? Well, you could do it like this. You say, I want this from this index to this index. We're grabbing from this element here all the way to the end. So if you want to do that, you don't need to specify this. If I don't put an index, it's going to go until the end of the array. I could also do from the beginning of the array until two. You could drop both indexes. And in that case, it would be a slice that views this whole array, okay, from beginning to end. Just to illustrate that a little better, let's say that this is primes and this is going to be primes slice. And if we print primes, you're gonna see that they are the same, okay? But one is an array and one is a slice. Okay, now you might be wondering, what's the difference? Well, let's write a function add numbers. It receives a slice of numbers and it iterates and sums them. So instead of printing these things, let's print the sum. And you'll see that you can't pass primes here because primes is an array of six elements, but this function expects a slice. So we can pass in primes slice here and it cannot it works and behaves like an array, but it's not. You might be saying, okay, but this is cumbersome, okay? Do I have to like create an array like this and then create a slice from that? And the answer is no, you don't have to. You can just do, if you come here and you do this, what you're telling the compiler here to do is, hey, create an array of six elements, then create a slice that views the whole array. So basically what we just had now, but return that slice. Now primes is a slice, it's not an array. Okay, so if you change this, it should work. All right, so the next question is, how do you create a slice that's empty? Because I'm being explicit here, but what if I don't have all the elements? What you could do is you could say, make, and this is the function that you have to do to use to make a slice that's not without specifying the array, a slice of integers with length five and capacity five. Now, what is the difference between the length 
and the capacity of an array. Basically, when you say I want an array of capacity 10, you say I want to reserve a chunk of memory with enough room to potentially fit 10 elements. But the length of your array is how many elements of that chunk of memory are actually in there. You can have a capacity of 10, but only have one element in there and your length will be one. So what that means is that you can increase your length until you reach your capacity and then you're screwed. You need to create a new array with bigger capacity, copy your old array into that array and then add there until you reach the capacity and then you repeat. So this is the way that Go allows you to grow arrays because it'll handle that for you. Let me show you how. If we omit this, it'll create a slice with a backing array of capacity five and length five. Let me prove that to you. Let's print the length of this and the capacity. So it's five, five. So now I can do primes at position four and I store two in there. That's not gonna error out, let's do it. What's gonna happen if I try to store something at index five? Well, if, you, if I run this, you're gonna see that it's gonna panic because I'm, you're saying you're outside the length of your backing array and your capacity. What you have to do here is you have to append to your slice. So this is the equivalent of push in JavaScript. I wanna append the element six to the end of my primes slice. Now the problem here is that you actually need to store this. If you're running out of capacity, you can't, you don't have any more space left in your array. So you have to, what I said, create a new array, copy everything and, and add it there and increase the capacity. So append is gonna do exactly that. Uh, and to show that to you, let's print the length and the capacity before we do the append and afterward. Now this is interesting because in the beginning we say, I want to slice, back by an array that has a length of five and a capacity of five. Length of five, capacity of five. You see these two fives here. When we append something to it, now the length is six, okay? Because we now have six elements in our array, but the capacity is 10 because the Go runtime says, okay, I'm gonna add, give you more capacity in case you wanna keep appending things so I don't have to keep doing this thing. So let's add a few more items just to see kind of what, it, what happens. And let's print again the length and the capacity. So I appended for a while and at some point append run out of capacity. So you had to do that copying again. And you see that by the end of this, we have a length of 12 and a capacity of 20. So you can see how every time that Go has to do that copying over of your, of your array is going to create bigger and bigger and bigger arrays to prevent having to do all this copying all the time. So the capacity is gonna be growing a lot more than your length. Let's go back to our ori original example. Um, remember that we have this whole array in memory and we have a slice that is a subsection of an array. Now let's say that a lot of time passes and we no longer have this around. We, maybe we, this function returned this slice and it's in some, living in some other place. The go runtime has to keep the whole array around even though we only have a reference to a slice that is like a little portion of that array. So let's think of a scenario where that might happen. Let's say that you read a whole file in to memory and it has like, I don't know, 50 megabytes. And then you say, you find the piece of the file that you care about and you say, oh, I want this little slice of the whole array of bytes. I just want this little piece. And you start, you return that little piece and you that piece is moving around. And then you might think, okay, the runtime is gonna find out that if this whole array, I am only viewing with a single slice this little piece, so it's gonna release the rest. No, it's gonna keep the whole array in memory. So you have to be aware of that. Uh, hopefully this helps you understand slices. Go is kind of able to give you the best of both worlds. You can handle arrays as the fixed size structures that they are, uh, or you can have a view of that array with a slice and append to it or see little, you can re-slice a slice, so you can see a little portion of that slice and it will still reference the same array under the hood. Actually, you know what? Let's re-slice the slice. In our array here, this is, let's grab from element two or from element one through, and if we print that, it's gonna be elements three, five, and seven. Now let's say I wanted to re-slice that. Slice two, and this is gonna be a slice of a slice. And I'm gonna grab elements zero through two. Okay, so S 
has the elements 3, 3, 5, 7, and S2 is going to be a slice of this slice. So it's gonna grab from element zero and one. So zero and one. The whole array is still in memory. Just something to keep in mind, but slices are beautiful abstractions. If you wanna see just how beautiful slices are, try to implement hip sort in Go, or look at an implementation of hip sort in Go. Uh, all right, so I'll see you guys in the next video.